holy uh, Hubalah, <coughs> about the Dome of the Rock. In the center of Jerusalem sits an imposing structure, even today, called the Dome of the Rock, built by Abd, Abd al-Malik in 691 AD. Someone tell me how to pronounce these Arab names, please. One will note, however, that the Dome of the Rock is not a mosque, <coughs> as it has no Qibla, no direction for prayer. It is built as an octagon with eight pillars, suggesting it was used for circumambulation, or to walk around. I would just say walk around. Why you use such a big word like that? Thus it seems to have been built as a sanctuary. Today it is considered to be the third most holy site in Islam after Mecca and Medina. Muslims contend that it was built to commemorate the night when a Muhammad went up to heaven to speak with Moses and Allah concerning the number of prayers required of the believers, known as the Ma Mi Raj in Arabic. Yet, <coughs> according to the research carried out, out on the inscriptions on the walls of the building by Van Bircham and Nevo, they say nothing of the Mi Raj but state mere polemical quotations from the art which are Quranic, though they are aimed primarily at Christians. The inscriptions attest the messianic state of Jesus, the acceptance of the prophets, Muhammad's receipt of revelation, and the use of the Islam terms Islam and Muslim. Let me get my ice pack here, put it in my back. Sometimes ice packs work for old people. Why, if the Dome of the Rock were built to commemorate the monumentous momentous event does it say does it say nothing about it let me correct that perhaps this building was built for other purposes than that of commemorating the miraj the fact that such an imposing structure was built so early suggests that this and not mecca became the sanctuary and the center of a nascent islam up until at least the late 7th century Nascent. What does nascent mean? Let's take a look at that. File blank. N A S A S C E N T. Yep. Well, tell me what it is. I'll let you know. I think it's just something that wasn't heretofore clearly spelled out. Uh, maybe not existent. Evidently, so far, the evidence shows it was not existent. From what we read earlier at Muhammad's intention to fulfill his and the Hagarin's birthright <coughs> by taking back the land of Abraham or Palestine, it makes sense that the Caliph Abd al Malik would build this structure as the centerpiece of that fulfillment. Is it no wonder then? that when Abd al-Malik built the tome, dome in which he proclaimed the prophetic vision mission of Muhammad, he placed it over the temple rock itself. According to Islamic tradition, the Caliph Suleiman, who reigned as late as 715 to 717 AD, went to Mecca to ask about the Hajj. <coughs> he was not satisfied with the response he received there, and so chose to follow Abd al-Malik, traveling to the Dome of the Rock. Note, not to be confused with the Iman Malik B. Anas, who, before he was born in 712 A.D., would have been only three years old at the time. This fact alone, according to Dr. Halting at SOAS, points out that there was still some confusion as to where the sanctuary was to be located as late as the early 8th century, it seems that Mecca was now only now, 60 years after the Muhammad's death, taking on the role of, as a religious center of Islam. One can therefore understand why, <coughs> according to tradition, Walid I, who reigned as caliph between 705 and 715 AD, wrote to all the regions, ordering the demolition and enlargement of the mosques. Could it be that at this time the Qiblas, were then aligned towards Mecca? If so, it points to a glaring contradiction in the Quran which established Mecca as the sanctuary and thus direction for prayer during the lifetime of Muhammad some 80 to 90 years earlier. And that is not all, for we have other archaeological and inscri inscripted evidence which point up to differences with that which we read in the Quran. Let's look at the reliability of Muhammad's prophethood 
We're using the data at our disposal. We have Nebo's rock inscriptions. In order to know who Muhammad was and what he did, we must go back to the time when he lived and look at the evidence which existed then and still exists to see what it can tell us about the very important figure. Dr. Wansboro, who has done so much research on the early traditions and the Quran, believes that because the Islamic sources are all very late from 150 years for the Sirah Maghazi documents as well as the earliest Quran, it behooves us not to consider them authoritative. It is when we look at non-Muslim sources that we find some rather interesting observances as to who this man Muhammad was. The best non-Muslim sources are on this period, which we have, are those provided by the Arabic rock inscriptions scattered all over the Syro-Jordanian deserts and the peninsula, and especially the Negev Desert. The man who has done, has done the greatest research on this, these rock inscriptions is the late Yehudu Nevo of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. It is to his research, which is titled Towards a Prehistory of Islam, published 1994, that I, refer, I will refer. Nevo has found in the Arab religious texts dating from the first century and a half of, and a half of Arab rule, 7th to 8th century AD, a monotheistic creed. However, he contends that this creed is demonstrably not Islam, but a creed from which Islam could have developed. Nevo also found that in all the Arab regions, institutions, religious institutions, during the Sufiani period, 661 to 684 AD, there is a complete absence of any reference to Muhammad. In fact, neither the name Muhammad itself, nor any, any Muhammadan formulae, that he is the prophet of God, appears in any inscription dated before the year 691 AD. This is true whether the main purpose of the inscription is religious, such as in supplications, or whether it was used as a commemorative inscription, though including a religious emphasis, such as the inscription at the dam near the town of Taif, built by the Caliph Muawiyah in the 660s AD. <clears throat> the fact that Muhammad's name is absent on all of the early inscriptions, especially the religious ones, is significant. Many of the later traditions, the Sirah and the Hadith, which are the earliest Muslim literature that we possess, are made up almost entirely of narratives on the Prophet's life. He is the example which all Muslims are to follow. Why then do we not find this same emphasis in these much earlier Arabic inscriptions, which are closer to the time that he lived? Even more troubling, why is there no mention of him at all? His name is only found on the Arab inscriptions after 690 AD. <clears throat> and what's more, the first dated occurrence in the, of the phrase Muhammad Rasul Allah, Muhammad is the prophet of God, is found on an Arab Sasanian coin of Zagzalid B. Abdallah from the year 690 AD, which was struck in Damascus. Of greater significance, the greater first occurrence of what Neva calls the triple confession of faith, including the Taweed, that God is one, the phrase Muhammad Rasul Allah, that Muhammad is this prophet, and the human nature of Jesus, Rasul Allah wa Abduhu, is found in Ab Abd al Malik's inscription in the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem, dated 691 AD. Before this inscription, the Muslim confession of faith cannot be attested at all. As a rule, after 691 AD and on through the Marawanid dynasty until 750 AD, Muhammad's name usually occurs whenever, whenever religious formulae are used, such as on coins, milestones, and papyrus protocols. One could probably argue that perhaps these late dates are due to the fact that any religious notions took time to penetrate the Arabic inscriptions. Yet, according to Nebo, the first Arabic papyrus, an Egyptian antiquan, which was a receipt for taxes paid, dated 642 AD, and written in both Greek and Arabic, is headed by the, the Basal, Basmala, yet it is neither Christian nor Muslim in character. The recent religious, con the religious content within the rock inscriptions do not become pronounced until six, after 661 AD. 
however, though they bear religious texts, they never mention the prophet or the Mohammedan formulae. This means, Nebo says, that the official Arab religious confession did not include Muhammad or Mohammedan formulae in its repertoire of set phrases at this time, a full 30, 60 to 60 years and more after the death of Muhammad. What they did contain was a monotheistic form of belief belonging to a certain body of sectarian literature with developed Judeo-Christian conceptions in a particularly literal style, literary style, but one which contained no features specific to any known monotheistic religion. Of even greater significance, these inscriptions show that when the Mohammedan formula is introduced during the Marwanid period, after 684 AD, it is car carried out almost overnight. Suddenly, it became the state's only form of official religious declaration and was used exclusively in formal documents and inscriptions, such as the Pi Papyrus Protocols. Yet, even after the Mohammedan texts became official, they were not accepted by the public quite so promptly. For years after their appearance in state declarations, people continued to include the non-Mohammedan legends in personal inscriptions as well as routine ch chancery writings. Thus, for instance, Nebo has found a certain scribe who does not use the Mohammedan formulae in his Arabic and Greek correspondence though he does on papyrus protocols bearing his name and title. In fact, according to Nebo, Mohammedan formulae only began to be used in the popular rock inscriptions of the central Negev around 30 years or one generation after its introduction by Abd al-Malik, something sometime during the reign of Caliph Hisham between 724 to 743 A.D. And even these, <clears throat> according to Nebo, though they are Mohammedan, are not Muslim. The Muslim texts, he believes, only began to appear at the beginning of the 9th century, around 822 A.D., coinciding with the first written Qurans, as well as the first written traditional Muslim accounts. Thus, it seems from these inscriptions that it was during the late Marwanid period, about 684 A.D., <clears throat> and not during the life of Muhammad, that he was elevated to the position of a universal prophet, and not even then the Muhammad formula was, was, which was introduced was still not equivalent to, with that which we have today. <clears throat> now we go into the Quran itself. It seems evident that the Quran underwent a transformation during the hundred years following the prophet's death. We have now uncovered coins with supposed Quranic writings on them, which date from about 685 A.D., coined during the reign of Abd al-Malik. Furthermore, the Dome of the Rock sanctuary built by Abd al-Malik in Jerusalem 691 A.D. does attest to the existence at the end of the 17th 7th century of materials immediately recognizable as Quranic. Yet the quotations from the Quran on both the coins and the Dome of the Rock differ in details from that which we find in the Quran today. Van Bertram and Groman, two etymologists who have done extensive research on the Dome of the Rock inscriptions, maintain that the inscriptions contain variant verbal forms, extensive deviances, as well as omissions from the text which we have today. <clears throat> So we've got a number of corroborations here with Cook, Crone, Cook, and Van Berkshire, Part 2, and Groman's Arabic Perpyri. That'll tell you where they're located. If these inscriptions have been derived from the Quran which, with the variants which they contain, then how could the Quran have been canonized prior to this time, late 7th century? One can only conclude that there must have been an evolution in the transmission of the Quran through the years, if indeed they were originally taken from the Quran. So we have different Qurans, but we only have one Bible. The, the sources also seem to suggest that the Quran was put together rather hurriedly. This is underlined by John Wansbro, who maintains that the book is strikingly lacking in overall structure, frequently obscure and inconsequential in both language and content, perfunctory in its linking of disparate materials, and given to the repetition of whole passages in variant versions. 